Hey everyone. So today I decided to do something a little bit different. We're not going to be gaming today. Today I thought I would discuss five things that I think every private instructor should do when starting up a studio or five things that I personally wish I would have known when I started doing my private lessons. So with that being said, let's roll the intro. And as a reminder before I get started, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more music content and gaming content. This is a, you know, kind of a jack of all trades channel. So, that being said, don't forget to do that. So, number one thing that I wish that I would have done better when I started teaching private lessons is making sure that I ask my student what it is that they are here for. What do they want to accomplish? Because every single student comes to you in a private studio wanting to learn something. I know that kind of sounds redundant because it's a private studio. However, ask them, what do you want to get out of this? What is it that you specifically what to learn what is your goal find out that goal and then build your lesson around that chances are they're coming to you because they got inspired by something that we they witnessed whether it was a performance that they saw or whether it was a movie and they heard a really cool song that they wanted to learn how to play or whether it was just them hearing a song on the radio or in general that they want to learn how to play or sing. Okay, number two. The second thing that I recommend you do as a private studio instructor whenever you decide you want to get into it is figure out what age range that you feel comfortable working with. Me personally, I've worked with age groups anywhere from, I think my youngest student was maybe seven up to someone who was in their early 60s. You have to learn where you're most comfortable. I am personally most comfortable teaching the teenage group. Ages maybe 12 up to 17 or 18 whenever I can send them off to college and say, there you go, here's your new experience, go have fun. That's personally my age group that I'm most comfortable working with when it's in a private studio. Now, if you're a general music teacher, chances are you have worked with several different age groups by now. So you already know this. But if you're someone who is, you know, just kind of done this as a hobby, you've gotten really good at it, you don't necessarily have, you know, a background in education but you are willing to try. That's when you want to experiment and figure out, okay, I'm more comfortable with teaching this age. The third thing that I recommend that you do when you first get started doing private music lessons is make sure your student is there and they feel like they're accomplishing their goals kind of set up a roadmap when they first come in. It's always important to stay on task. That way they can feel accomplished and make sure that they're accomplishing what they want to learn, not what you necessarily want them to learn. The beautiful thing about working in a private studio is that you personally can do any curriculum you want. You can tweak it the way you want. You're not bound by state standards or anything like that. So make sure that they're accomplishing their goals in a way that they want. We are going through these very fast. Make sure that your students feel comfortable working with you. Whenever your student comes to you in a private studio, it is important to build that bond with them because you want to work with them for years chances if you have them in your studio make sure that they feel warm make sure they feel welcome and that they can come to you if they might have an issue that 
you might be able to help them out with. I know me personally, whenever I was in my private lessons throughout college, my voice teachers and guitar teachers, really any private studio teacher that I had, they were almost like my therapist too. We would sit down before my lesson even started, for like maybe the first five minutes of my lesson, and just chat. How's your day going? How's your week going? How are you feeling? Are you okay today? You know, it's important to make sure that your student knows that you care and that they can come to you and that they can talk to you about maybe stuff that's going on. And number five, make sure that you're open to change with your students. Your chances are, if you have a student for years and years, their taste is going to change over time. You need to learn to adapt with them. Don't be a stick in the mud about them saying, hey, can I add this song to my rep? Can I add this? Can I, we learn this? How do I do this? Even if it's not something that you maybe intended to have taught them. Make sure that you are there to teach them, keep them having fun, and make sure that they learn. And I'm gonna give you a bonus one. Make sure that you're building bonds with your students' families, especially if they're younger. Chances are, if you've got a younger student, they're gonna be coming in, and they're going to be with mom, with dad, with grandma, or maybe even with the older sibling if they're old enough to drive. And they're going to be sitting and waiting because, you know, they're not going to have enough time to leave your studio to go and to go shopping or anything like that. Because personally, I feel like if it's a younger student, they only need to have a 30-minute lesson. But that's something for another video. The point is make bonds with those parents when they're there dropping them off or picking them up. Talk to them. Tell them what happened in the lesson. What did you go over? What is your student learning? Because word of mouth is the best form of advertisement. And you're going to start seeing that when you're building these bonds with these parents, they're going to be advertising to their friends, to their other family members saying, hey, Johnny has a great music teacher. He's learning all kinds of different stuff about how to sing, or how to play piano, or how to play guitar, or whatever instrument it is you're teaching them. Build that bond with them. Make sure they know that they can come and talk to you, and make sure that you're warm and friendly to the parents. All right, so that was five things that I wish that I would have done better when I started teaching private studio lessons. If you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel as it helps me out a lot. And if you have any questions and you want to catch me live, you can find me on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. So, that's all I got for you. Go get started teaching. Take care.